my topic here is uh, development of corporate law, lessons from a journey of evolution. Uh, as a starting point, my uh, whatever I'd like to speak today on has not necessarily, considering the, the intellectual capital and the highest level of intellectual capital we have here today from the legal confraternity, I think I would be the last person to speak about principles of law, or for that matter, how I make companies, or how FDIs are made, or what joint ventures should be all about. Uh, uh, made an exceptional presentation on the arbitration, and congratulations to you on that. Evolution is what I find is something that has to happen both on a professional and on a personal level. And I, I genuinely thank you uh, for giving that last pointer to us, that fact on trees being used and all of that paper being used, one, ten, one point something billion liters of water. I think that is how we all need to take step forwards towards evolution as lawyers. What I speak to you today is, is essentially a case study of people like me uh, from where we started off, how we switched into law, and after nearly two decades and working across five continents, we have realized that what brings us out there is not only our knowledge of law, it's not only our understanding of law, but actually as to how we approach life as a whole and what we as lawyers need to do to take this to the next level. Uh, my background is a very interesting one. I, I, I had a ch actually a change of my commercial religion. My undergrad is in economics and finance. I did hardcore investment banking, a financial analyst amongst the capitalists of the world on the Wall Street, starting my career with Goldman Sachs and trained by one of the most ruthless people out over there in the world of finance. Uh, that uh, trade ended after a little while and I decided to move back to my country in Pakistan and on the way back I took my law degree and then, of course, since then, I have been involved in corporate law. My expertise is in infrastructure, project finance, energy. So I deal with anything and everything that is created on the ground in Pakistan that is over X, Y, Z, 100 millions of dollars. And, and during this journey of mine, this journey of mine, what I've realized is that law is a presumption. The knowledge of law is a presumption. I was sitting with Sir over here, and he said, the application of law where it really matters. I would like to even say that even the application of law is a presumption in my part of the business. So my first lesson that I've come across is that we need to learn multiple languages. And when I say languages, I do not mean Hindi, Urdu, Chinese, Mandarin, no. It means learning multiple skill sets. It is a continuous investment in our skill sets as to what we on the table can talk about and negotiate upon that defines who we are. I'll give you a small example. Wastewater treatment is an interesting area. Water seems to be an interesting area in Pakistan. And a few uh, years ago, I was tempted to actually work on Pakistan's first wastewater deal. Before I went into that deal, I took three months off from my practice and I went into an engineering university, uh, NED University in Karachi. And I educated myself about every single molecule of how water is produced, what it is comprised of, what makes it into wastewater, and how do you transform that into clean drinking or industrial use water. Now, is that required from a lawyer? Not necessarily. Is that required for even somebody who's an investment banker? Not necessarily. But what, gives, what gave me the edge was, is that corporate lawyers, we are not only doing the law, we're also scribers at the end of the day. We're writing out contracts. Contracts that are meaningful, contracts that will be tested in real time, contracts that go beyond the standardization worlds. So if you do not know what to write about, you will simply have no clue what to write about. Uh, I always say, either you've seen a match of football, or you've been or heard about it or read about it. I'm not necessarily sure you can write an essay on a football game or a football match. So I would always recommend people, invest Invest in your learning. I, I, I come across my colleagues, uh, my friends, and we all seem to take a lot of pride in, oh, you know what, this XYZ act came out, this XYZ pronunciation came out, this judicial case came out, and we are all, all, all on the ball on that, and we know everything about it. Yeah, that is just one part of the job. What is the best part of the job is are we evolving, are we learning, and that is addition of a skill set. I've always believed, uh, I, I, I'm not sure whether it's a, it's, it's a right form to say that. Creation and change, for me, are two different things. Now, I'm not trying, trying to get linguistic about it. I'm not going to try to get philosophical about it. But change is something you already have, and you would like to improve it. Change it. I think the world we're living in today has forgotten the meaning of creation. 
And I think this is exactly what COVID has taught us. We didn't necessarily have to change. We had to create the world as a whole, as a large. I, I, I still feel there have been times where we have gone back and we have actually tried to think about all of these things that define us from the latitude of change and creation. Ladies and gentlemen, I assure you, what brings us today, all of us together, is the strive for excellence. The Lex Talk Awards actually go ahead and they try to award these awards to people from whether it's 10 years plus or 10 years below. They are awarding people for their excellence and what they're doing. And I would not have made these comments or words in any other forum besides this forum. We all have that potential to create. We're not saying we are the deities of the world. Of course, the deity that the Almighty who's created the world has actually real, has done the real creation. But if we were to take a speck of what he's done into our personalities, creation is what is required. And creation simply does not happen. It does not occur with what you have in your own pockets, i.e. your knowledge of law. Creation will happen when you have the perspective of what's going on on this table and what's going on on this table. And of course, what's going on over there. You find them all together and ultimately you will find one singular solution or multiple of those that will bring you and your clients to a different form of excellence altogether. My second lesson that I've learned, and I think this is the most important lesson, I'm not sure how things are happening in India, but I, I, I did have a conversation, or for that matter, in different uh, jurisdictions that are represented up over here. If there is one thing that I've realized in life that nothing else matters except one, and that is the human capital. The human capital I formed, uh, I used to be a partner at Pakistan's premier law firm for 15 years, and what a great ride that was. We set up the biggest project finance practice in this country. 85% of the mega projects that have been set up in that country since the turn of the centuries, we've been part of that. Now, am I smart enough to be there? No, it was the right place at the right time, dealing with the right human capital. Ladies and gentlemen, my firm is just three years old. And this year, mashallah, with the grace of God, including this award, we won about 13 of them, including Pakistan's best law firm of the year by HLO rankings. Now, how is that possible? That has been only possible not because of me. It's because of the human capital that has been hired from colleges, from universities, from not too many lateral hires. The problem with the world is that we all are under the impression that we want to be the best. Well, guess what? This life is not a battle to the top. It is not a battle to be the best. It actually is a war of ambitions. The sooner we realize this, the better it is. There cannot be a benchmarking. Ironically, I have realized that there cannot be a benchmarking. The moment that we realize that something is the best and we actually attain that standard, guess what? It was just the beginning of what we thought was the end. So I would always suggest if there is the one weapon of yours that will help you through all of that is human capital. And human capital acquisition is one thing. Retention is another big one. Now, we had Pooja over here who spoke very, very well. You know, the kind of uh, franchise that she runs in India. It's an old firm, about 30, 35, 40 years. Survival of these firms today is on the basis of human capital that they've generated. I've been asking this question from a lot of people. Do you have known dynastic law firms in India? The answer is yes. Do we have known dynastic law firms in Pakistan? The answer is yes. But do we have a lot of them? No. Ironically, I feel uh, my wife is my managing partner and she's the only the managing partner right now because she's the proper businesswoman that we could hire at this stage. Tomorrow, if we can find people graduating from Harvard who once were MBAs and want to come and run business, that is how they will have to deal with it. And that is how the people will run forward. I believe lawyers are not the best businessmen. The business and the law side of the affairs need to be kept separate. This is not a turf war for your own personal good or growth. This is a turf war for your law firm, a law firm that is at the end of the day should be surviving you. I have uh, had a very, very uh, interesting conversation over lunch right now. And, and, and what we realized in that uh, with one of my conversations with my, one of my colleagues is that what you create in your life as lawyers, as managing partners, as administrators, as leaders, as prime ministers, there is one of the big tests. And one of that test is, what happens to that franchise? What happens to that, 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 that thing that you've created if I was to take you out of that? As I say, 
Ali Khan right now is the biggest existential crisis for Ali Khan Law Associates. I wake up every single day trying to find a replacement for myself. And that is something that drives me to work every day. I'm done with my billions of deals and a lot of money that has come in between and whatnot, whatnot. If there is something to be created now that is larger than life, that is larger than me, and then everything else in between, I truly tell you it is the replacements that you will find and that you will instill and that you will grow in your own firms. As I said, human capital. I have a very good story. I used to work for 125 hours plus doing investment banking in New York. But guess what? Every single day I used to curse that job. I became a chain smoker. My first boss was a South Korean who was the most ruthless person on the Wall Street. So yes, he trained me in a way that if you give me a 3,000 page document, I'll just go to exactly the fifth or the sixth page that has a formatting flaw in it. I'll get you to the exact same page that has a apostrophe or comma flaw in it. Now, that is the way these guys train me. But 125 hours plus a week, and I used to curse that job. But as soon as the first of the month came, I said, let it be one more month, say. So we went back, and we did an analysis for our law firm. And I said, the case study is not about my law firm. It's, it's, it's actually the learnings that we've done. We ran an ultimate level. We hired one of the best consultancy firms internationally and locally to figure out how much the people paying to the lawyers. And we got the number. All we did was we just slashed away the f first five levels and we said, we want to be the biggest law uh, pay masters in this country. Suddenly you attract good talent. Money is a byproduct. I've believed in that all my life. What you create, what you at the end of the day produce, how you produce it, how you deal with your clients and the solutions that you give them from top down. It is that's what's going to make you what you are today. As they always say, money is a byproduct. The reason I'm sitting over here today on, uh, with all of you and enjoying this is because there's a 26-year-old girl who decided three years ago, when one of my associate partners decided to step down, she decided to step up. A 26-year-old girl sitting out in Lahore, running one of the biggest project finance deals in Pakistan right now. How does that happen? It simply happens because she is given that sense of ownership. Ownership just not, is not given by just giving hugs or pats on the back. It comes by giving them career options. It gives them by giving them money. I'm talking to all the big lawyers up over there, and I'm sure this all is not new for you. But for somebody like me, who's seen business being done in a very specific way in our part of the world, has come to realize ultimately that if people, if, if, if there is loyalty that we all speak about, why do we have this problem? Oh, we will train these five people and they'll end up making their own law firms. Why? No, it does not happen. It's never happened. I've always lost my people to either the US or the Clifford Chances. And, and that is something I cannot, it's not the Clifford Chance that they went for. It's actually, they cannot take that view on Pakistan that to stick back in that country, that is the problem. I have never lost a single employee or a single colleague of mine to the law firm. Again, you have to make them partners. You have to hire partners. I'm sorry. When I speak of human capital, we do not hire associates. We do not hire associates. And that is a fact. You hire your future partners. And that is how it is. If you hire people, an army of slaves, they will end up, they will make you a slave someday. Hire people who can question you intelligibly. Hire people who can actually work with you, who have the same driving force. I'm a very hard person to work with I, 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 because I don't work 24 hours. I work 28 hours. This mind actually is, is on a fast forward level. I'll be thanking myself when I take that award actually because I have to deal with my own mind. But you have to deal with people who are going to be your future partners. Please understand, I'm a capitalist and capitalism is good. As our friend from GE yesterday said, and I love what he said, capitalism has found solutions. I look at people and we say, please be selfish, please be greedy, please be capitalist, and don't please think about me. Just think about yourself. As long as people can actually appreciate their own self-interests, as long as they know what's going to make them happy, as long as they know that working these hours will get them there and learning about this thing will get them there, trust me, you don't need to. We do not have a policy that kind of deals with We do not have a policy that deals with uh, coming to office in time. People have to come in time. Why would they not come in time? 10 o'clock means 10 o'clock 
or if you want. And I asked them, do you want to come at 10 or do you want to come at 10.30? Everybody said 10.30 is fine. I said, well, how about 11? They said, well, 11 is a bit late. So for people who are self-vested in their own growth, you know, in their own career, you please look at them. Capitalism, being greedy, being selfish, hiring those people, working with those who are vested in their own selves is good. And the common good will ultimately end up in the standards being much, much higher for everyone at the end of the day. We live in an environment where there is a big problem. And that is, who do we benchmark? Uh, you know, I'm not sure how to say that. One Dome Kana Raja, I used to say that everybody's blind, but one who can see with an eye is actually the king. But that is not the case. I've just realized everybody's blind from where we come from. And the person with the stick is probably is the, is, is the one. But no, is, that's not even the case. Everybody's blind and nobody's got a stick. Anybody who can just hear tick, 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 tick is, who can just hear is apparently the king. So you decide who your comparables are. As I say it in my language, Rose Khuda banai jayenge or Rose girai jayenge. We will create gods every day and we will bring them down every day just to make sure that we do not benchmark ourselves to the wrong standards of this entire fraternity or for that matter as a, as a community as a whole. So it is fundamentally important to, to understand the value of that. Lastly, but not, and I, I find this to be one of the last part of this job is on this forum. We, the lawyers, are enablers. Enablers of future. I'm sorry, we have been made to think that we exist in courts and documents, or for that matter, in rooms. Not at all. We are the cats or the tigresses or the lions that go every, that have in-depth knowledge from commercial, legal, and technical as to what's going on on every single table in this room. We are the enablers that understand how things are going to connect. Let's not be limited and caged by these books of law and by these principles of law only. We are meant to be doing much, much bigger things in life. What I take away from here today are not those great lectures or, 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 or those awards that I've come in for, not at all. This forum has given me an opportunity to briefly at least interact with some of the biggest minds out over there who are ambitious, who are way forward looking. I was speaking to one of the pharmaceutical major companies who were dealing with ventilators, a great mind up over here. That is the learning. So if someday, somewhere out there, there is a demand for a ventilator required, I will have that one beautiful card to reach out to to make sure this all connects. If there is somebody out there who needs to really understand what employment is all about, what are the real practical issues in employment, I, I, I know Pooja is the person who's going to always help me out. And this is going to be beyond, beyond, beyond the realms of law. Ladies and gentlemen, always look at the top because there is no top. This is a war of ambition. And I would, I would sincerely thank you all for listening me out. Again, this was not a law spiel. This is more of me trying to understand and trying to make us all understand we are not just lawyers. We are much, much beyond that. And we hope to play that role every single day. Thank you so much. God bless you all.